it's Robert Dick once again. This is video example four of my Leonardo magazine article, Acoustics, Real Time, Real Life, Why the Flute and Flutist Had to Evolve. What I've got in my hands is called the Kingma System Flute, and it is an instrument designed by the Dutch flute maker Eva Kingma, and she worked in collaboration with the American flute maker Bickford Brannan. Uh, Ava came up with this really, really wonderful idea to put a small key on top of a large key so that one can, I hope you can see this, um, open a small hole in a key that you can't put your fingers on directly. So here, here we are. That's the large hole opening and that's the small hole opening. And um, she's added four to the flute. And what it's done is it's made it possible to have, um, whoops, added five, um, made it possible to have an open, to have a small hole or a large hole open on every chromatic position on the center joint of the flute. And from the musical standpoint, that is mega. So let me first show you what this instrument does. Um, a good example would be the C and D ninth that I demonstrated before. Now, if we figure out all the positions for that using this pattern of one small hole open followed by four holes closed, um, on a regular BAM flute with open holes and low B, we will find that that's playable in six different spots. Using the Kingma system flute, well, all of those missing intervals are filled in, and um, that's enormously helpful musically. implications of that are absolutely enormous um, and not every multiphonic can be um, will have a set of that size but um, the, um, the possibilities of the flute have been opened up in a quantum way now the problem is that this is built on a BAME flute, so we inherit all of the um, weirdness of the, the fingering motions of the BAME flute, and we add more. So um, there are plenty of times when you're using the Kingma key, where, for example, here on the thumb, you're going downwards, but the sound is going upwards because a hole is opening up, not down. And um, that happens again and again and again. Nevertheless, this is the instrument that's going to take us um, through the next, the next phase of the flute's evolution. Um, I think it's going to be a while before the Robert Dick system actually hits the scene. And this is the, the instrument that players will find that they can adapt to much more um, in that they can immediately play it. But when you really start going into depth, um, you wish again and again that there was a better kinesthetic identity. Um, the last thing I'd like to show you is this head joint that I invented. Um, thinking about where to go from here. This is the glissando head joint, and um, it's basically a telescoping flute mouthpiece.
approach that you can play a glissando on every note of the flute um, is something that's new. And um, there have been slide flutes before, but no flute that could, could telescope that had mechanism. And here, the multiphonic glissando, this is entirely new in the world of the flute. So um, with the glissando head joint, it's, it's not really a transposer, but um, because in order to transpose, as we lengthened the flute, the holes would have to get further apart. But, <clears throat> but once again, the possibilities of the instrument expand in, well, also a very quantum way. And um, it's really quite exciting.